Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and welcome to the second video of the Go Testing Bible course. Now, in the previous video, we looked at how you could get up and running creating your own simple unit test to cover a nice and simple calculator package that we've been building up. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to be taking it a step further and we're going to be introducing the concept of subtests into your testing strategies. Now, as always, if you're watching this on YouTube, then don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more Go tutorials. And for those of you that are interested in supporting the site and supporting the channel, for just the price of a cup of coffee every month, you'll be able to gain access to the premium courses which I am developing and releasing live on my site, Tutorial Edge. Now, if you want to find out more about that, I'll leave a link in the description below. Cool, so let's dive in. Now, let's start off by covering what this t dot, or testing.t pointer that we pass into our test functions is. Now, you may have noticed that we passed this into our previous test that we defined in the uh, the previous video. Now, the testing.t type is effectively a type which is defined within the testing package. And it's used to primarily help manage things like the state of all our tests, and it supports auxiliary functions like formatted logs. Now, not only that, it also has a number of different methods like run, skip, fail, and we'll be covering these each individually in videos further down the line in this course. Now, it's going to be the t.run method, which effectively enables us to define subtests within our test functions. And this will effectively give us more power when writing tests to incorporate things like parallelism into our tests. So with that out of the way, let's dive into the code editor and let's start improving how we write our tests. Now, before we dive into refactoring our tests, we should always try and sanity check that our tests are working before we start making any improvements. Now, I'm going to run go test with the verbose output, and I can see that both of my tests that we defined in the previous video are working as intended. Now, with this out of the way, let's dive in and let's start improving the original test calculate as Armstrong method. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new t.run method or a subtest, I should say, using the t.run method. And I'm going to say should return true for 371. Next, I'm going to pass in a function, which is again going to take in this type uh, from the testing.t. And within this, I'm going to move in this test case. And I'm going to move in this comparison here. And that's really all there is to it, to defining a subtest within a test. Now, just underneath this, we're going to define another subtest, and this is going to be t.run should return true for 370, which is another Armstrong number. And we're going to pass in func t testing.t. And we're going to say, we're just going to copy and paste what we've got up here. And we're simply going to update this to 370. Now, with this done, we can go into the terminal and we can try running these subtests. Now, we're going to run the test just as we normally do with the go test and the dot slash dot 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 notation. And we're going to say verbose true. Now, as you can see here, the output from our testing is slightly different. We can see at the top level, the test calculate Armstrong function has passed. And then we can see individually, each of these subtests has also passed. Awesome. Now that we've got some handle as to how we can update our test to run subtests, let's try another example and modify our test negative case to use subtests as well. So I'm going to say should fail for case 350. Again, we're going to pass in this function with the pointer to testing.t type. And I'm simply going to move the closing brackets down to the bottom here. And then because we want to improve the test coverage or the amount of tests we have to ensure the validity of our code, we're going to copy and paste this and we are going to change and add a new test case for 300, which isn't an Armstrong number as well. And again, we need to update the value here. Cool. Now that we've got another negative test case in our code, let's try and run that again. And as you can see, just as we saw with the positive test case, it's ran the top level function and then it's, the, it's outputted the results of the subtests for the negative case as well. 
Cool. So in this tutorial, we've been able to cover the wonders of subtests and how they can be beneficial to you as Go developers. Now, in the next tutorial on this course, we're going to be taking it a step further and we're going to be looking at how you can use table driven tests in conjunction with subtests to improve the way that we're testing this application. Now, as always, if you enjoyed this video, then please let me know in the comments section down below and leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more Go programming content. Cheers.